All right, somebody said that there's too much downtime in my videos in the very beginning, so we're going to pray in the very beginning, and then we're going to go right into my commentary, okay? So I'm going to let the audience build as I pray, and then I can get right into my commentary, and I think we'll see how that is, right? In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. We invoke St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, his eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided, inspired with this confidence. We fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, spies not our petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer us. Amen. All right, so... Uh, thank you, Father Imbarato, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. There's the link. There's the link. Today, we're going to talk about killing the messenger. That's right, killing the messenger. And I'm going to talk about that, what that means, how it relates to me. I'm sure you've experienced it, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, St. Bridget, Bride of Ireland, St. Bridget. My storehouse shall be one of bright testimony, a storehouse that my king shall bless, a storehouse overflowing with abundance. The son of Mary, who is my beloved one, will bless my storehouse. He is the glory of the whole universe. So St. Bridget talking about testimony, bright testimonies or storehouse, right? All right, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about speaking the truth, proclaiming the truth, regardless of what it is, and indeed then experiencing the killing of the messenger, right? All right, so I'm celebrating Mass at five east, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. It's going to be 7 o'clock Eastern Time. We're going to have some adoration ahead of time, and then we're going to have Mass. 7 o'clock Eastern Time is going to be the votive Mass of St. Joseph, so I'm really excited about that. Today is First Wednesday, the pure heart of St. Joseph for Our Lady of America. Our Lady of America, folks, uh, uh, the devotees of Our Lady of America for their intentions. Today's first reading, so I'm prepping for the Mass, right? I'm prepping for the Mass here. Today's first reading, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. In your struggle against sin, now not just personal sin. You know, the, the Hebrews is not just talking about personal sin and our struggle against personal sin. We've not resisted to the point of shedding blood like St. Francis of Assisi, right? Rolling around in the thorn bushes so he wouldn't uh, suffer the temptation of lust, right? Uh, that's, that's one thing. But one aspect of it is how about you've not resisted the point uh, you in struggle against sin, cultural sin, Cultural sin, the sin of abortion, the sins against marriage, family, right? These abominations against God. Have we, have we resisted those sins to the point of shedding blood? No, no. And, you know, I mean, I could stand here and be pompous and holier than thou and say, you know what? If you haven't gone to jail for the babies, don't call, your pro, don't call yourself pro-life. Don't call yourself pro-life, right? If you haven't risked freedom, don't call yourself pro-life. No, I would never do that. I would never do that. But at the same time, at the same time, people want to sit in their cozy little chairs on their cozy little couches, and then they want to tell pro-life activists what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's evil, right? And, and that's nonsense. That's nonsense. I have 30 years of pro-life activism. 
I've started two pregnancy resource centers. I'm post-abortive. I've done post-abortive witness. I've sidewalk counseled. I've ministered in front of abortion mills. Uh, uh, I've adopted, right? I mean, my, my experience in the pro-life movement is vast. It's regional. It's national. Uh, I'm the protest priest, so they call me. Um, there's nothing that I haven't done. And there's not a tactic that I don't believe is worthwhile, as long as it's peaceful and prayerful. All right, there's not a time I've been rested. I, so yet there's people who live in their, their pro-life experience in a comfort zone, and they're going to criticize me for different things. And that's what we're going to talk about: killing the messenger. All right, killing the messenger. But anyway, let's stick with Hebrews here. In your struggle against sin, you've not resisted to the point of shedding blood. None of us suffer enough. None of us suffer enough in reparation for our sins and all the sins against the uh, sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, okay? Uh, Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were astonished. Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has he given me, given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. He was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. And they killed the messenger. They killed, they killed Jesus. He was the messenger, the messenger that salvation can be yours, right? Repent and believe in the gospel, and they killed him. He was the messenger, and they killed him, right? People are always looking to kill the messenger if indeed the message does not jive with what they want to hear, what they want to, and, and it's no different today, and that's what we're going to talk about. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. All right, so let's go to my Facebook page. All right, we're going to go to my Facebook page right now. And we're going to talk about this. All right, so there I am. There I am, 100% pro-life. You want that sweatshirt? You want this sweatshirt, T-shirt, just like it? ProLifeGear.com, ProLifeGear.com. Okay, so uh, beware, beware, be aware, be aware, be aware, be aware, I guess the same thing, right? After 30 years of activism in every aspect of the movement, I have real problems with the corporate pro-life movement and leadership, and I will continue to speak the truth about them. The money, the injustices, the lack of focus on abolishing abortion through constitutional person from conception. If my posting the truth about what uh, what I, what I know and see, all right, again, I always find edits here, what I know and see, what I know and see, that's wrong, what I know and see bothers you, feel free to move along and not stop by, but, when I, but I'm not going to stop I care about abolishing pre-born mass murder and speaking the truth. I really don't care who I upset in the process. Okay? All right. All right, and this is, this is, this is the big deal here, okay? So I posted about Sean Carney. Now, I'm not picking on Sean Carney. He, I may, he may be the highest paid person in the pro-life movement. I'm not sure, but he's up there. He is up there, okay? So Sean Carney, National Director of 40 Days for Life in 2019, was compensated $270,000, which is about $5,000 every week. Their 2019 $990 is quite revealing. So they're crucifying me. Now, the point is, the point is, and some people accused me of attacking him, of attacking him. 
for merely stating what's in his 990, for merely stating what's on GuideStar.org, right? Where is the attack in saying Sean Carney, National Director of 40 Days for Life, in 2019 was compensated $270,000, which is about $5,000 every week. Their 2019 990 is quite revealing. Where's the attack there? Where's the attack, right? Now, the comments, the comments are split between no big deal. I have no problem with that. And others, all right, and others, all right, that have a problem with that. And that's the point of my post. The point of my post is that we are not talking about here somebody, and I always used to use this, this adage when I was a pastor. You know, we don't get paid because we're selling cans of corn. These pro-life leaders are not selling cans of corn. Somebody said, well, the manager of the local HEB gets paid more than that. He's the manager of the local HEB. Well, the manager of the local HEB gets paid because he's selling merchandise to customers. Sean Carney and the leaders of the corporate pro-life movement are getting paid because they're generating revenue of the goodwill of the people. And I think the people have a right to know how much he's making, how much the corporation's making, and how they're spending the money. Do they or do they not? So you can have no problem with what Sean Carney's making, what 40 Days for Life is making. I think in 2019, it was like $7,000, $7 million, $7 million for the year. Uh, somebody said, well, well, his salary is, is, is reflected in the increase in revenue. So this person admits that his job is to generate more and more revenue. So that's the goal of the pro-life movement, to generate more and more revenue. So you have more and more money to spend on marketing to generate more and more revenue. I thought your goal was to end the daily mass murder of pre-born children. So this, this, this thread is very, very, very telling. But the fact is, some people say, good for him, he has eight children. He has eight children, good for him, okay, good. You don't have a problem with that. And as far as I'm concerned, then you should keep giving him money. But there's other people have problems they're, that are shocked by that. And if they're shocked by that, and they don't want to give to an organization that brings in $7 million, that maybe spends a million, $2 million to bring in that $7 million, wants to pay high salaries. Don't forget Sean Carney's making $5,000 a week. Well, Matt Britton's making almost $5,000 a week. And I think Carlin's making about $3,000 a week. So that's $13,000 every single week. I mean, think about that. So you may be okay with that and might want to continue giving to them, but you may not be. Now, I'm not singling out Sean Carney because I'm going to get around to Susan B. Anthony. I'm going to get around to Students for Life. I'm going to get around to live action. I'm going to get around to everybody, to everybody, and tell you how much everybody's making and how much the organization's making, how much the key uh, uh, people are making, how much they're, they're charging, how much they're uh, not charging, but spending on generating this revenue. All right, I'm going to get around to everybody. Now, people are, are like, you know, they, they say, well, Father, we're, we're tired of those. We're t well, that's fine. Look, if you're tired of what I'm posting, if I anger you. If you don't like, then then either don't stop in or move on. I don't care. I don't care. This is a virtual reality that I'm making as real as possible because what I deal with is real life problems. And I will tell you the amount of money in the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, the amount of salaries that are paid, the number of people becoming wealthy, even millionaires, the amount of money paid for marketing under the guise of education is, I believe, not right. It's obscene. People need to know. People need to know. And on top of that, they need to know what exactly is the organization doing. Now, 40 Days for Life is, I think, one of the two key entry points into the pro-life movement along with the March for Life. So that's very good. I said, Sean Carney's got eight kids. That's his best pro-life work. 
but people have a right to make the decision for themselves as to whether they want to donate to an organization that's bringing in now, we're talking about 2019, 20, 21. So they're, they're at least two years behind in their 990s. Two years behind in the 990s. And actually, yes, because they, you can't expect them to have 2022 done already. Ours is not done. Now, you might say, well, Father, what, what, what does your 990 look like? Well, I talked to our, our bookkeeper, and I think she said 300000 I uh I uh, think maybe we'll bring in 350000 in 2022. So 2022... 350000 Now get your mind around that. Matt Britton, that's total revenues, $350,000. Matt Britton and Sean Carney between them, between them, bring in over $500,000 a year in compensation. Over a half a million dollars a year between the two of them. My entire organization revenues bring in $350,000 a year. So think about that. For the $350,000 we bring in, Bud and Tara Shaver support their five kids. Gabriel Vance and his wife support their three or four kids. And then we support three ministries, Catholics for Life, Abortion Free New Mexico, and Protest Child Killing. I take no personal compensation from my ministry. I get reimbursed some uh, some expenses. So think about that. We're supporting two families, three ministries, and two families, right, on $350,000 a year. And I think pretty effective ministries. Catholics for Life with youth. Uh, my ministry where I travel around the country, um, um, uh, uh, well, celebrating Mass, doing prayers of exorcism, ministering to frontline pro-lifers, ministering to uh, pregnancy resource centers, talking about these particular issues, uh, and even once in a while getting arrested. And then uh, uh, abortion-free New Mexico, doing great, great work in New Mexico, right? So is 40 Days for Life doing great work? Yeah, they're frontline people doing great work. But they're doing it free of charge. They're doing it voluntarily, and they're the ones who are poor in spirit, but should, should, and again, so let me think, 270, 260, that's 530, 530, 6, 680, $680,000 in salary between Steve Carlin, Sean Carney, and Matt Britton, between those three at the head of 40 Days for Life, $680,000 in income. Think about that. My entire ministry, three ministries, funding three ministries and two whole families, all right, bring in 350000 They're bringing in twice that, just three guys, just three guys. So look, it, I'm telling you this stuff. All right, you may sound like, it may sound like, Father, you're being critical. Yes, I am. But you know what? No skin off my back. If you hear what I have to say and you still want to send them money, send them money. That's fine. That's fine. But again, the other half of it is, the other half of it is, and again, Susan B. Anthony with Margie Dannenfelsa, Charles Lejo Lejoy, they're bringing in, I think, about $16 million between them. And then, stu uh, then Students for Life, I think, I, I don't know what, I think they might be up to 9 million, 10 million. And again, uh, that might be two years ago. Uh, Priest for Life, 15 million, 13 million, I, I think, you know, 15 million, 13 million was two years ago. Uh, Human Coalition, my God, oh, 15 million. Uh, live Action. What, 9, 10, 11 million? I mean, these, these organizations are bringing in big, big bucks. And they're paying a lot of people big, big bucks. And their marketing budgets are big, big bucks. Okay, so that's one side of it. That's one side of it. On the other side of it, you have pregnancy resource centers operating on a shoestring, primarily counting on volunteers, maybe a director that's underpaid for sure, 
uh, no marketing budgets. So they have no marketing budgets. They have money for clothes and, and diapers and formula and maybe some other professional services, but no marketing budget. They can't tell their local community what they do and, what they, and that they're there. Uh, so you have these pregnancy resource centers that are basically starving for marketing money. And then you have the mainstream corporate pro-life movement making all this money and not even promoting, focusing in on, demanding pres uh, a constitutional person from the moment of conception. I mean, there's something wrong there. There's something wrong. And if you don't think there's something wrong there, well, then I have to question your commitment to this issue. And really, what are you praying about? What are you reflecting on? What, what do you contemplate? What do you meditate? So you're okay with all that money in this corporate stratosphere, this celebrity, what, right, wealth and, and, and uh, celebrity stratosphere, while pregnancy resource centers on the front lines starve to let people know where they're at. And these people with all the money, all the money, none of it filters down to these pregnancy resource centers. And where all the money is, right, all the wealth is, they're not even demanding the abolition of pre-born mass murder. They're not demanding it through person or constitutional person. I'm sorry. So if you want to get mad at me, if you want to kill me, kill the messenger, that's what you want to do, well, so be it. I don't care. I'm not shutting up. I'm not. I don't care. All right? So uh, I think that's important. Troy Newman, everybody, makes $461 per week before taxes. But I think he sells real estate. And again, that, that's fine. He, he's devoting his life to the pro-life movement and figuring out a way to subsidize himself and his family without taking money away from the ministry. That's what I do. I live on my social security. I live on my priestly pension. I live on my corporate pension. I get some of my expenses reimbursed. I'm sure Troy does too. When I worked for Priest for Life, I took 10000 less than what they offered. I was making like $31,000 a year when I worked for Priest for Life and then had some expenses paid, right? So it was probably $50,000. Compensation package is probably $50,000, all right? Uh, when I was a priest, an active priest in the Archdiocese of Santa Fe, a pastor, I, did, I founded Project Defending Life, the Holy Innocence Chapel, didn't take a dime. Didn't take a dime, not even reimbursement, right? So... You know, again, what does it mean to be poor in spirit? What does it mean? Okay. So, you know, some people, uh, uh, some people I think uh, are uh, uh, realistic about it. Some people are appalled by it. Some people are okay with it. So somebody asked you, what do you think would be a reasonable compensation for the work that he does? I would be satisfied if, if he was demanding the abolition, abolition, of pre-born mass murder through constitutional personhood from conception, but none of, of these big incomes are shouting that. Uh, 
Okay. So you see what I'm saying, right? You're going to make all that big money? Well, at least be demanding that we abolish abortion through constitutional personhood. But they're not even doing that. They See, they're very happy making this money. No problem, no problem. Why do not abolish abortion? I'm making all this money, right? It, it, it drives me crazy, okay? It drives me crazy. Mainstream national corporate pro-life leadership is more concerned with complaining about Democrats, their chief fundraising strategy, than actually abolishing pre-born mass murder. And that's the truth. It's it's really I I you know to me what I see and and really it is the fault of the average pro lifers I'm trying to educate the average pro lifers but they're okay with this minimalism they're just perfectly okay with this minimalism right right it, it just they're okay with whatever's going on well that's conscience easing that that's just plain conscience easing if you're okay with all this money. And all the compromises and the ignoring of the frontline activists. It, it, it just, it, where do you get this stuff from? It's because you're sitting on the couch instead of being in front of the abortion mills. I will tell you the overwhelming majority, overwhelming majority of people who are in front of the abortion mills, when I tell them about this stuff, they're appalled. The people who are okay with it are couch sitters. For the most part, they're couch sitters. You know? Poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. Church really has one job called the world to repentance. Ain't doing it at all. The world is a moral mess in so many ways. Yes, the church's hierarchy today is really a bastion. Is the church's hierarchy today really a bastion of light and truth, providing true moral clarity for a world rotting in its moral decay? Something seems seriously remiss here. No? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. This one woman says, as a catechist, I have some trepidation in sharing the church's teaching because there are those who feel the message of sin and repentance is too harsh. They can't repent of sin if they don't know what it is. Amen. 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 But the bishops, look at your catechist, all right? The bishops are the ones who should be out there blowing the horn. I'm not going to support Ron DeSantis unless he does something about abortion in, in Florida. I'm sorry. I don't care. And this is another, people are going to be upset with me. I know it. They're going to be upset with me. But if he doesn't do something about abortion, I'm talking about significant. This guy's got a supermajority in the House, supermajority in the Senate. He's got a 6-1 Supreme Court. He should be abolishing abortion in Florida, abolishing abortion. And what is he doing? Again, he's doing nothing. He's doing nothing, 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 nothing. He's doing nothing in Florida to abolish abortion. Nothing. 15-week ban. Abortion is going to be more this year than they were last year. They're, they've been more every year. That you know, it, It's just unbelievable. And people just love this guy. Love him. Why? Because you're a bunch of couch sitters who don't pray, meditate, reflect, so you don't see things clearly. You're idolaters. You're political idolaters. You're celebrity idolaters, right? You look at these famous, well-known people in the pro-life movement, and you adore them. They can do nothing wrong. That was with the Pavone thing. That's what the Pavone thing is all about. They don't want to hear that, that he's possibly a liar. They don't want to hear that he's possibly a creepy boss, a creepy guy. I don't want to hear that stuff. I don't want to hear that stuff. He's my idol. 
He's my pro-life idol. He's my pro-life man. He's my pro-life priest. He's, he's had no faculties for seven and a half years. No domicile for seven and a half years. He's got four victims who allege that he, he violated bound. Four, not one, not two. And I know one personally. I personally experienced it. I saw it. I confronted him with it. You guys are okay with that? He's been caught in numerous lies. Just read the newspaper articles. You guys are okay with that? It, it's just, oh, well, the Pope, oh, the bishops, all the... Well, it's, it's absolutely amazing. All right. I'm done. I'm done. All right, so St. Bridget, intercede for us. Our Lady of America, tonight, Mass, 5 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Our Lady of America, for the intentions of all the devotees of Our Lady of America.com. Our Lady of America.com, St. Joseph, intercede for us. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, protect us, uh, protect life, marriage, and family, all attacks against life, marriage, and family. You guys want the four prayer cards, these four prayers that I wrote right here, go to protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com, and uh, indeed, my brothers and sisters of Christ, scroll down, just scroll down, and you can take screenshots of the prayers, pray them with us, or you can uh, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. One envelope for every set, one set of cards for every envelope. Self-addressed stamped envelope to my Florida address. You can get it at protestchildkilling.com. St. Charbel, St. Peregrine, St. Philomena, and uh, uh, Bishop Gallegos. Bishop Gallegos, right? Uh, Venerable Bishop Gallegos, bishopgallegos.org, eye ailments, vision ailments, and then the three miracle workers, Philomena, Charvel, and Paragon. Some guy said, I'm looking, the reason why I do this stuff is because I'm looking for my 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. Uh, what a stupid, ignorant remark. Now, mind you, it won't surprise you, the, guy, the guy's profile has zero posts, no picture, and really no information. So he's a troll. He's a troll. All right, but he's gonna he's saying that, oh, you're just looking for your fifty you're being controversial for fifteen minutes of fame. I don't need this abuse. I don't need this abuse. But I will tell you what Martin Luther King says, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere, right? So you can't we can't be fighting this great injustice, the greatest injustice of all time, and think that everything else is okay. I can make as much money as I want, I can treat people any way I want, I can act any old way I want. Right? Because I'm fighting this great injustice, the greatest injustice of all time. No, I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Okay. My son John took his own life over eight years ago. All right. There is, uh, there is, uh, his prayer, his funeral card, his picture. And, uh, here is the prayer that we pray. St. Mary, undoer of knots, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, St. Zelie Louise Martin, St. Faustina, St. Kateri, St. Dymphna, pray for us. All right, then Mother Teresa, help us to be Jesus and see Jesus and all those who we meet. Uh, help me on my On the Road for Life ministry, intercede for my On the Road for Life ministry for families and also for the pre-born for the end of abortion. All right, now our final prayers again. And here's my placard here. Now the link is right there to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. We pray for our nation, our Lady of America, and to see for our nation, our people, our leaders. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests. Father in heaven, we thank you for your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the church and remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Joseph, St. Stephen, St. Bridget, intercede for the Pope, all bishops and all priests, especially in our hour of need, Our Lady of Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world and the end of the daily mass murder of pre-born children. Okay, I don't know what this guy, okay. All right, so let's see where we're at here. All right, let's do our daily offering. This is where we offer up our entire day to our Lord. He laid down his life for us. We're called to lay down our life for him by laying down our lives for others. Um, and indeed, my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially for the least of Christ's brethren, right? That's who we really want to lay down our lives for.
28 minutes, good, we're right on time, very good. All right, so here we go, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our daily offering this is where we turn our day into a prayer, where we pray ceaselessly. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father in heaven, name your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask, send the Holy Spirit. Our Holy Spirit, when we... Uh, uh, Send our Holy Spirit down upon us. We offer up our entire day to you, our joys, our sorrows, our trials, our tribulations, our suffering, our mass, our rosary, our divine mercy chaplet, our prayers before meals, the meals themselves, our examination of conscience, an act of contrition tonight, our work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time, everything we do today, O oh Lord, everyone that we meet, everyone that we encounter, everyone, Lord, we offer up to you. And thanksgiving for our lives and all the blessings in our lives, for all the intentions we hold in our heart and minds, for the intentions of all those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each and every single day, for the church, the pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary study, for the priesthood, for those discerning religious life of mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that everybody in their vocations may desire to do all things in humble obedience for the praise, honor, and glory of God, in atonement and reparation for our sins and charity and chastity in our vocations. For the, uh, for the end of all war, violence, terrorism, religious persecution, for the end of abortion, the end of euthanasia, the end of all immoral experimentation, for the end of the contraceptive mentality in our culture, for the end of all the attacks in our culture against sanctity of marriage and family, for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual, that they may find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy. For the end of all war, violence, terrorism, religious persecution, for the end of abortion, the end of euthanasia, the end of all immoral experimentation, for the end of the contraceptive mentality in our culture. Uh, for Eucharistic unity amongst all Christians, peace in the world, the conversion of the world, the conversion of nations and political leaders, especially Catholic political leaders who defy their faith, conversion necessary within the hierarchy of the church, <coughs> conversion necessary in our families and for our own daily personal conversions. For anyone that we wounded or led astray in our lives, for anyone that's wounded us, that we be reconciled with everyone. The law enforcement and armed service to protect our freedoms, that they be protected. Correction officers, they be merciful. Those who are incarcerated, they may seek Christ's mercy for law enforcement, courts, and governments that they may, uh, that who protect the crime of abortion, they may be confronted with Christ's justice and seek his mercy. That our Lord send more laborers into the Red Rose Rescue Movement, the pro-life activist movement. That our Lord protect Red Rose Rescuers and pro-life activists from legal action. And also for the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them, in particular our deceased loved ones and family members and our loved ones and family members away from the church that they may embrace Christ's sacraments of mercy. We ask for this. We ask for all good things through the intercession of St. Stephen, St. Joseph, St. Rita, St. Anastasia, uh, uh, St. Patrick, St. Padre Pio, St. Mother Teresa, St. Bridget of Ireland, all the angels, martyrs, and saints, of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary, all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. I'm Father Stephen Imbarato, 100% pro-life, prolifegear.com, themensmarch.com, themensmarch.com, realestateforlife.org. If you need a realtor, realestateforlife.org, themensmarch.com, to abolish abortion, rally for personhood, uh, protestchildkilling.com. There's the link for my YouTube channel and also my Rumble channel. Please like, please subscribe, please hit that bell, that notification bell. I love you. I love you dearly. Please pray for me. I can't thank you enough for your prayers for me, for my family, for my son, for all of my intentions. I love you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass coming up in a little over an hour, some Eucharistic adoration before Mass. You're really going to enjoy that. My friends, go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.